It's been a while since I've last looked at a motherboard, so why not jump back in with this one, uh, one that is in theory going to be fairly future-proof for upcoming CPUs, and that is the ASRock B450 Steel Legend. Now, the name is a bit much, but the board itself isn't. It's actually a really impressive board, and we're going to start off with the most important part here, which is the RGB, I mean, the, the VRMs, that, that, that's the right one. Uh, the VRMs are a 4 plus 2 phase design with 60 amp chokes, and I was testing with a Ryzen 2700X, and found that the, the VRMs didn't exceed more than 60 degrees Celsius. The CPU is able to maintain its full boost clock, even under sustained and consistently sustained 100% CPU utilization with Prime 95. And in uh, the Blender BMW uh, render test, it was seeing almost identical results to basically any other board that I've used the 2700X on, so all good there. When it comes to future proofing in terms of the, the new Ryzen 3000 chips, ASRock unfortunately could confirm that this board will be receiving a BIOS update, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you're going to be just fine. And while the VRMs won't necessarily be able to handle the rumored 12 and 16 core chips, you should be plenty fine for any of the mainstream options. Right, so enough about the CPUs, let's talk about features. Just to the right of the socket, we have four DDR4 RAM DIMM slots. This is always a good start and not necessarily guaranteed on these cheaper style boards. We also have two M.2 slots, the top one having a all right uh, heatsink on top and the bottom one being run through the chipset and shares its lanes with SATA ports three and four, meaning that if you're using those SATA ports or using the M.2, you can't use the other or vice versa. You also have a reinforced X16 size PCI slot at the top for your graphics card, as well as uh, just a large, large number of X1 slots, and also an X16 sized, although X4 electrically slot, that if you're using the top M.2 slot will be turned off, or vice versa. And speaking of the SATA ports, you actually have a bit of a weird configuration of all six SATA ports that are all laid out flat in, in one stacks across the side of the board. It's fine, but it's a bit of a, a weird layout, but either way, those are there for you as well. You of course have RGB, both on the board itself, from the chipset heatsink, and from the VRM area, as well as also a header up at the top of the board if you're using say the stock AMD Wraith Prism heatsink and also a standard RGB header down the bottom as well as an addressable one down there too. One header you are missing is actually the newer USB Type-C internal header. This is quite common on these cheaper style boards but it would have been nice to see and would have differentiated it a little bit among the rest of its competition but you still do have Type-C on the back and speaking of the back the rear rail is pretty plentiful. You have four USB 3 ports some USB 2s, USB 3.1 Gen 2s, as well as a Type-C port there as well. You've also got audio provided by a Realtek ALC 892 codec, which is always decent enough. Gigabit Ethernet, no Wi-Fi sadly, but overall a pretty comprehensive setup. BIOS-wise, this is nothing fancy. You've got a fairly standard layout, sort of grey monotone looking BIOS, which is easy enough to navigate. You can still get to all of your settings that you'd expect to, like your boot options and even overclocking settings, which is actually a fairly in depth setup there, which is always great to see on this type of board. And actually overclocking it is fairly easy if you've got a chip that you can push. And of course the VRMs can handle basically any of these chips, even overclocked, which is always great to see as well. So rounding up then, you have a pretty impressive board with a good list of features, a good set of VRMs to handle basically any chip you want, and in theory, good support for future chips as and when they come out. So what's the catch then? Well, normally I would say that it's the price, but this board has a very reasonable price. It sits exactly where you'd expect it in the market. The ATX version that I have sits around about £100, and the M80X version sits around about £90. So really, again, exactly where you'd expect it in the market, and a pretty decent value for money. I really don't have much else to say here, other than this is a well-featured and well-set-up board with an okay but not fantastic BIOS, and a pretty decent price point to go with it. To answer the usual question of would I put this in my PC, hands down yes, I highly recommend it um, and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's planning on just getting into Ryzen. This seems like a very good shout because it can support any chip that you can put in it right now and it still has a good amount of features while not being overly complicated and also has a good I.O. which a lot of these cheaper boards don't necessarily have so um, hands down I highly recommend it. Of course those are my thoughts, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is this a board you're interested in picking? up? Are you considering picking up a new Ryzen 3000 series chip when they're out? If so or anything else, let me know 
know in those comments down below. If you want to pick up this board, then feel free to take a look at the link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. If you want to support the channel, then feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below too. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. There's also merch links if you want hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs. And there's also private internet access, which is a great and cheap VPN and Humble Bundle, which lets you support charities while getting cheap games too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Make sure you subscribe for more videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can also check out other videos over there as well if you want to keep watching now. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below. I'll see you all in the next video.